Hi there, Ms. Lam's here. Today we would like to talk a few things about microbiology. So let's get started. So a few equipments that you need to know is that this is the cell corny counter. So um, in the past, we used to have a pen to attach to it, but unfortunately we have lost that pen. Nevertheless, this machine is very useful for us to see the plate much more clearly. As you can see, there's some white light at the background, so enable soon to can see the corneas or inhibition so much clearly. And you can see that there's a, actually a magnifying glass on top of it, also helps you to see the corneas much better. And there's a counter here, so you can also press uh, up or down just to record the number of bacterial corneas that you're counting. So this is a cell corne counter. Moving on to the next one. Okay, so some of the basic setup you need to get ready before you start your experiment. Uh, one of them is the micro pipette. Okay, so you can extract up to um, 0 0.1 to 1 mL of uh, fluid. Okay, and when every time when you use the micro pipette, you need to use the micro pipette tips. Okay, and then once you finish using it, then you need to discard it in the waste box. Okay. And then, in case the laminar hood sometimes uh, flow cabinet is occupied, then you can use ethanol lamp to create a sterile environment as well. Okay, and a bacterial solution. Okay, and so on. And um, so when you are doing microbiology, generally speaking, there are two main methods. One is called the spread plate method. The spread plate method is where you will measure the inhibition zone. Okay, we'll just explain it in the next video later on. And there's also a pore plate method where you will count the bacteria colonies. Okay, so that's in general setup. Okay, and usually we will have a manual to show soon how to do those. So apart from the laminate flow cabinet, how can we create a sterilized workbench environment? So let's watch this video. So first of all, you need to use ethanol wipe, okay, to sterilize your working bench. Then you use a paper towel to wipe it down. Next, you will use an alcohol lamp, okay, ethanol lamp, okay, and with a lighter. You can light it up, okay. This will create a airflow that will create a sterilized environment near the flame. And this is how you can switch off the ethanol lamp, okay? Just a swift close with the cap to cut off the oxygen. So and then you turn on the ethanol lamp again. And then you can work near your work your plate near the ethanol lamp. So what will happen if you do not tie off the hair? Okay, so make sure you really tie up your hair when you are working with ethanol lamp. It is very important that you don't make sure you don't have your hair caught with fire. Okay, safety comes first. Then the next one is how to use a micro pipette. So before we start, just let me annotate a few things first. So here uh, at the end here, okay, let me just uh, make sure I annotate. Okay, mouse. Okay, uh, maybe I can draw a few things as well. Mm, text. Uh, let me see. It's my first time to use this. Okay, so, okay, so I okay, so first of all, this is a plunger. Okay, so this region is a plunger. Okay. And um this is where you can control the volume by turning the knob at the end and also by pressing it, okay, to extract the fluid. Okay. Actually, there are two stops here. So first of all, when you extract fluid fluid, then you press to the first stop insert the micro pipette with the tips on okay into a solution and then slowly release the plunger okay now what is the second stop used for the second stop is to remove the excess of the um, fluid from the tip of the uh, micro pipette okay so that's the, the remaining the remaining fluid from the micro pipette tips okay so for that is the second stop Okay, and then next one is uh, this one, the reading. So actually this micro pipette can read up to from 10, uh, from 100 microliter, which is 0 0.1 mL, okay, cm cube, to 1000 microliter, that means 1 mL or 1 cm cube, okay? So this is 
uh, the range that it can extract the volume of. Okay, and then um, and then there's a hook here to where you can um, safely pull it um, wrap around your the base of your index finger, as we can see in the video next. So let's see. Okay, so this is the values to show. Okay, so this is the range that it works with. Okay, uh, currently it's 500. That means that it can extract 0 0.5 mils of fluid. Okay, so you can turn the knob, okay, to change the volume that you extract. Okay, so uh, there's actually another button here to remove the tip. Okay, so this one is there to extract fluid, this to remove the tip. Okay, so first stop, okay, and this will remove the tip. This one is second stop, okay, just to remove the excess of the fluid from the tip. So use the hook to put it, hold it, hook it onto the base of your index finger. Okay. Okay, you must use a micro pipette tip, okay, to prevent cross contaminations. So look closely. First of all, press to the first stop and then dip it into the solution. Make sure it's fully submerged in the solution. And then slowly release it, okay? And then to, to the tip of the uh, solution, okay, press to a second stop. Now you can see that it's all removed, okay? Then use the other button to remove the tip. Okay, so that's how you use the micro pipette. Okay, moving on is next one. Okay, so this is an overview. Okay, so spread plate, as we mentioned before, we will use uh, uh, this, okay, use the disc to measure the inhibition foam. Uh, bowel film is uh, sometimes we'll use, and uh, for the spread plate method, we actually, some of them will use like uh, the bowel film method we'll discuss in next video. And there's the pore plate method where you will count the bacterial colonies, okay? So this will be what we looks like. So before we continue with the methods, we need to know how to discard any unused agar. So let's take a look. So, okay, so this is the solidified agar, and there's another solidified agar in the bottle. So it's not preferred, okay? So what you can do is you can use a glass rod to uh, break it down, and then you can pour it away and discard it in the bin. So don't pour it down the drain, otherwise it will clog the drain. So you can just scoop it out, okay, and throw it away. You can do the same for the uh, solid agar that's in the bottle. First of all, you use a glass rod to break it down into a small pot. And then you just pour it away. Okay, and then clean the glassware and then you're good to go. Okay, all right. And then uh, sometimes you ask, oh, uh, should I do microbiology? Okay, now uh, before you can successfully obtain your data, uh, in microbiology it's possible to get a lot of failure plate because there's a lot of factors you need to consider. So let's take a look at this. So what factors we need to consider? First of all, you decide whether you want to do spread plate or pore plate method. Now, there's a lot of factors comes by. So for example, such as the color of the antimicrobe um, so substance that you're testing, okay? Or like, for example, how thick, okay, is it uh, water soluble or is it not water soluble? So for example, if you are doing something that's alcohol, okay, so how the effect of alcohol on um, bacteria inhibitions, okay, then Pore plate method will not be suitable because alcohol cannot uh, dissolve uh, in the agar. And what will happen is that the agar will not solidify. So then you have to use spread plate method. So there's a lot of things to consider as to which method to use. Generally speaking, we will start with trying things out first, okay, in the part study. So the second thing about it is, is like, for example, the bacteria concentration. Now, uh, in the, based on the past year experience, it can range from 0.0001% to 1%. Now, uh, if you want to go into that dilute one, you can refer to my previous video as to how we do zero dilution, okay? Uh, but you can see that it, it ranging from like uh, this dilute solutions, okay, to 1% uh, 
of the bacteria. And the reason why there's no definite formula for that is because it depends on, again, it depends on what you're testing. If your antimicrobial property is very strong, for example, you're looking at like mouthwash is very strong antimicrobe, then um, you probably need to use a higher bacteria concentration in order to see a va valid result. But if you're looking at like, for example, let's say herbal tea, okay, so, um, then the herbal tea naturally there's not very high uh, antimicrobial property. Then in order to see the result, you might need to use a very dilute concentration. So again, it depends on what uh, antimicrobial property substance that you're using. Okay, uh, uh, and so on. Okay, and then uh, I. And then your antimicrobial substance concentration, again, it can range in from 1% to 100%. Why there's a, such a big difference? It depends on how strong the antimicrobial effect is, okay? So for example, um, if you're using something that's natural ingredients, we usually recommend 100%. But if you're using something that is like very chemical, then we'll usually use 1%. Again, you need to test it out first. Now, regarding to how, what concentration you should be testing, you can also refer to the previous video about um, how to decide what concentration you do, okay? Now, and then along, like I said before, why there's a lot of failure, okay, you need to be prepared to have a positive attitude is that there's a lot of things to think about, like incubation time. So uh, should you be checking your plate uh, every eight hours, every 12 hours, every 24 hours, or every 48 hours? Generally speaking, we use 12 hours to 24 hours, okay? Um, why we have 48 hours is because if you use the biofilm method, then you might need more than a day to do it, okay? So again, so one thing about microbiology is if you got it successful, you can, well, in a very good case that you can get it done in one, one whole set, okay? But then sometimes uh, you need to repair that or maybe it didn't work very well, then you need to re repeat many, many times. Okay, so be prepared to do many trials and do uh, sometimes failure comes along the way. Okay, sometimes material doesn't work. Some, it's possible that you have done all the plate in same treatment, but some plate works, some plate doesn't work. Okay, and there's many reasons to that. It could be because or oh, the bacteria was not sterile before you extract it, or it could be because when you first put your first batch of agar, the agar could be too hot, and then later on, as you do more and more plate, the agar cool down, then it didn't kill the bacteria. There could be many, many reasons. Okay. So agar too hot, did not mix the bacteria, there could be a transfer loss at low concentration. This is also a very common problem that happens at very low concentration. Uh, so that's why we, you should use zero dilution and that's why you should be familiarized with the idea of zero dilution. Or it's, it's also possible that your antimicrobial substance was too strong, so you need to tone down a bit, for example, dilute it a little bit. Let's hear what other students think about microbiology. This is another student's uh, view on the doing microbiology. Um, it takes a lot of time because you have to do a lot of try and error. So I started my microbiology study a month ago and for now I'm still doing and trying to find a suitable um, inhibitor for my bacteria. Yes, and now we're in our summer holiday and we're coming back to school to do that. <laughs> yes, and I just made 52 new petri dish again. <laughs> Today, yes. And uh, if we're giving you a second chance, will you want to do microbiology again? Um, yes, although it takes a lot of time, but it's really fun to make the dishes. Oh, okay. So, All right. I will do it again, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your help. Thanks. So this is another student on his field on microbiology. It's really hard and the bacteria doesn't really act on how you want it to be. Yeah. And it's really um, annoying to deal with. Yes, and we have to come back over summer holiday to do it. Right? Yes. <laughs> okay, so will you give you a second chance? Will you do microbiology again? Yes, because it's fun, even though it's very annoying. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your help. <laughs> Thanks. Hi everyone, so today I would like to ask a few students about their thoughts on microbiology. So let's start. What do you think about the microbiology? Um, it's really easy to fail. Like you have to really try like a lot of different um, conditions. Yes. Um, to make sure, and also like you have to make sure that everything is sterile. So mm. that, like only the bacteria, it's um, like the bacteria is only from the bacteria solution. Oh, 
Yes, bacteria is only from a bacteria syringe. That's that's very wise because we found that actually the plate has bacteria, but the bacteria is actually coming from the tea. So that was very interesting uh, things to share. And then anything else to add? How do you feel like continuously many many troubleshooting? Oh, um, uh, actually a very long process because we have to try like a lot of different concentrations and the agar volume mm. but then at the end when you finally see bacteria growing on your plate you'll feel very rewarding like you finally succeed so it's worth trying oh okay so if you give you a second chance to try and do it again will you choose microbiology again <laughs> okay, so we have heard a few students on the view on microbiology. So let's move on to the next one. Okay, so apart from the video, uh, from the audio, so let's see what the other student think uh, from the WhatsApp chat. So some student says that, oh, after finish my experiment of microbiology, I found out that it was very hard to collect a good data. I had to repeat a lot, a lot of times in order to have some data. Although the procedure when listening, it seems to be easy to handle. However, when conducting the experiment, it was difficult and time consuming. Waiting for the agar plate to dry, after that waiting for the probiotic to dry before putting the filter paper, then wait for another 24 hours for the inhibition to show. So this student were doing the um, spread play method where they need to find out the inhibition zone. And then another student feedback was, Confusing at first, but easy to do after you get the hand of it. So that's great. It's very positive. And the next one is, it's definitely a very interesting and thought-provoking uh, field of biology to study with many possible theories and subtopics within microbiology that can be explored by students. For example, the effect of certain substance or combined substance on bacterial growth. However, it's certainly not the easiest field of study in biology and results may all may not always go the way students expect them to do. My advice to students would be not to be easily frustrated about their failed result, but also to think critically about their methods to identify a possible source of error to improve the accuracy of their result. So this was quite formal from one of my students. So um, it's great to have some feedback about like preparing for failure, just be very critical about how, uh, their methodology. So what fails, okay, have a record of what failed and then what works and so on. So let's look at another one. So problems, okay, so concentration of bacteria, some of the bacteria will remain in the brick, bricking, the measuring cylinder, not fully stirred. Oh, oh, so that means that like, for example, um, when making the bacteria solution, uh, the bacteria powder actually doesn't fully dissolve in water. So uh, you need to stir it before you extract it, or uh, you need to use a magnetic stirrer to make sure that it's dissolved as much as possible. So how to solve it? Use magnetic stirrer to make sure it's fully stirred, occasionally stir the bacteria with a glass rod, making sure that it's not at the bottom. Yes, so that's very important. You make sure that this bacteria is not sediment. So before you extract it, you actually need to stir it a bit. Observe the pipette and make sure that there's an actual bacteria inside. You can see some small dot. Okay, so uh, especially in the very diluted solutions, it's always useful to have a look at whether there's some uh, bacteria inside um, in the very diluted solutions. Uh, advice given, will then be to make sure that your bacteria is working before you start dealing with the concentration and bacteria and substance ratio. Now this is very interesting because um, we need to store the bacteria in the fridge once it's opened. So uh, if the bacteria has been dead, okay, then uh, it might not be very useful. Suggestion is to deal with the concentration first. If it does work, then just to make sure the one-to-one -one ratios so that you can avoid getting too confused. Now, uh, yes, it's always good to start with one-to-one -one ratios because uh, if it doesn't work, for example, let's say if you've got a clay plate, then perhaps you need to increase the concentration of bacteria. Of another case could be uh, there's a lot of bacteria, very hard to count, then perhaps you should reduce the concentration of bacteria. So by having the ratio that's one-to-one, -one, it's easier to, for you to adjust. Make sure that the bacteria is coming from a bacteria, not the substance itself. So this is also very wise. So uh, this also proves the importance of um, negative control. So for example, you should have another plate that has, um, for example, let's say tea with uh, agar to check that actually tea does not have bacteria, things like that. 
Okay, this is a very long one, and this is the last one. So, um, during microbiology is truly a special experience that all students should try in their secondary life, especially if they aspire to do something close to pathology or medicine in the future. Through the process, students will learn such skills as operating a micro pipette, a tool that's otherwise rarely used, preparing an agar plate, and differentiate between pore plate method and thread plate method. Before starting microbiology, students should be equipped with some background knowledge such as knowing how to commerce a serial dilutions and have a clear understanding of how different types of experimental aim affects the methodology used in the microbiology. E.g. an experiment dealing with an insoluble solutions, a liquid, should not be handled using a pore plate method. Lastly, students should be mindful of health and safety regulations when doing the experiment. Agar plate should not be left in the incubator for more than 20, 48 hours as it may risk the emergence of the micus and other unwanted pests. All experiments should be done under supervision in such a safe zone such as the fume hood. Uh, yes, and when discarding agar plates, students should place them nicely in an airtight biohazard bag when rinse their hands with soap, water and ethanol. Okay, so that's very standardized as to what to expect, what to do in microbiology. So uh, again, safety comes first. I would not suggest students to bring agar plates home as it's much of a hassle and risk the spread of disease. From my own experience, I find understanding the step involved in preparing an agar plate especially hard, of which I suggest students research a bit in such area prior to the experiment. So pore plate, place the bacteria, place the antimicrobes or independent variables, place the agar, shake the plate or eat for even distribution. So this is just a very simple way of describing what you need to do for pore plate. Uh, yes, this student has been very kind to do a summary as well. And the next one is a uh, spread plate, uh, agar, place the bacteria, okay, spread the bacteria using cells, rather place the agar, uh, dip a small piece of, on a, oh, on, oh, it means that on, a, on the agar, place the, the dipped, the small piece of filter paper into your antimicrobe independent variables and place it around the uh, agar plate once the agar solidified. Okay, so that is about spread plate method. Don't forget to flip the agar plate over once the agar solidified before putting it into the incubator. And good luck with your experiment. So that was great. Um, the thing about the uh, flipping the agar plate uh, upside down is because what happens is that if you put the plate as it is, um, onto the incubator, then what will happen is that the condensation, because bacteria, they do respire and they do have water vapor and then the water vapor drip back on the plate, it may ruin your result. So that's why we need to, um, we need to flip the plate upside down when we store the uh, plate in the incubator. Okay, so um, that's about it. There's a few uh, very valuable uh, feedback from our students on the experience of microbiology. Yes, uh, it's very possible that you need to do it several times, okay, a failure is guaranteed. But overall, most students find microbiology is a fascinating topic. It's just that you need to plan ahead and have the um, mentality to get ready if it failed. Well, I hope the, this video helps you to decide whether you want to do microbiology for your biology IA or EE. So um, my suggestion would be uh, don't give up and at all for your experiments. So thank you and bye-bye.